Let's go to page 243 and let's start with number 21. Number 21, you have sine of 15 degrees and so you want to uh, use the identity to find the exact value. So first you need to find the angle that will give you the 15. So this will equal to sine of, I'm going to use the 45 minus the 30. So you want to use combination of the angle that you know, which are the 30s, the 45s, and the 60s. So you use combination of these to get that. Okay. So in other words, you can use 45 minus 30, or you can use 60 minus 45, so either way. And after that, you can use your identity. So sine the, so this is going to give you sine 45 cosine of 30, okay, um, minus cosine of 45 sine of 30 and then from here you can evaluate and again so if you don't remember you can just draw this right so 1 1 square root of 2 and that's for the 45 and the 30 is over here so you're going to get 1 2 square root of 3 okay? so you can use that as a reference okay or um, but normally if you use the one from the, the, the handout okay so it for this one, it's probably better to use the one on the hand now, okay? So this will give you square root of 2 over 2, cosine of 30, okay, that's a long one, so it would be square root of 3 over 2, cosine of 45 is square root of 2 over 2, and sine of uh, 30 is 1 half. So this will give you square root of 6 over 4 minus square root of 2 over 4. And if you put together, this will give you square root of 6 minus square root of 2 over 4. Let's go to 23. So you have sine of 20 degrees, cosine of 25 degrees, plus cosine of 20 degrees, sine of 25 degrees. So again, this is your sine uh, sum identity. So this is equal to sine of 20 degrees plus 25 degrees. And so this will equal to sine of 45 degrees. And so this will equal to square root of 2 over 2. Okay, let's, let's go to 25. So you have cosine of 81 degrees, cosine of 21 degrees, plus sine of 81 degrees, sine of 21 degree. So when you have cosine, sine, sine, that's a cosine function. Okay, and the, and the cosine function are the, have an opposite sign, right? So this, this is addition, so you're gonna have a subtraction. So it's equal to 81 degrees minus 21 degrees. Okay, and this will equal to cosine of 60 degrees, and cosine of 60 degrees up here, so it'd be one, two, square root of three. So this will equal to one half. So make sure you know your identity, make sure you be familiar with them. So 27, you have tangent of 17 degrees plus tangent of 28 degrees over 1 minus tangent of 17 degrees, tangent of 28 degrees. So this is your sum, ten, uh, tangent sum identity. So this is going to be equal to tangent of 17 degrees plus 28 degrees. So this is equal to tangent of 45 degrees, and so this will equal to 1. Okay. Again, tangent is right over here, right? So you're going to get 1, 1 square root of 2. So you got 1 over 1, It'll give you 1. Okay, let's go to 29. So 29, you, again, you're going to use uh, the identity to evaluate. So you got sine of x plus y. And so these are two conditions. So sine x equal to 1 over 3, and cosine y equal to negative 3 over 4. And it tells you that the x is in quadrant 2, and over here quadrant, uh, the y is in quadrant 3. So you need to go and draw your triangle. So this one is going to be over here, so it be quotient 2, and it's 1 over 3. So use your Pythagorean theorem, get a number first. So this will be, this will be square root of 8, 
Okay, so it'd be two square root of two and it's negative. Okay, so that's your that's your x. For the y is quadrant three. So it's negative three over four. So don't make a five, okay? Uh, it's very tempting to put a five over here, but it's not so. Okay? Hypotenuse is four, so you have to use Pythagorean theorem. So this will give you square root of uh, 16 minus 9 will give you 7 and it will be negative. So now to evaluate, you have to expand that. So sine x, sine x plus y will give you sine x cosine y. I'm trying to, I, I like to memorize my, uh, function, uh, my identity the other way. So I'm going to go sine y cosine x. It's different from the identity sheet, but I'm switching these. Okay, so let's go ahead and evaluate. So sine x is over here, so it'd be 1 over 3. And then cosine y, cosine y is this one here, so it'd be negative 3 over 4. Uh, and again, when you do this, right, you will always have a common denominator, always. Okay, so make sure you have a common denominator. So this is plus. And sine y is negative square root of 7 over 4. And cosine x is negative 2 square root of 2 over 3. Again, they should always have a common denominator. And try not to cancel out because that will mess up your common denominator. So this will give you negative 3. And this will negative, negative plus will give you plus 2 square root of 14 over 12. Okay, and that's it. So same thing, number 31. Looking for cosine of x minus y, and you have the tangent x equal to negative one over four, tangent y equal to negative one over five, and it tells you x is in quadrant two, and y is in quadrant four. Okay, so you can from here you draw your triangle, so quadrant two. So this is negative one over four. Now you have to be careful with the tangent. The negative can go with the top or the bottom, so you don't know that yet. So what you do is just go and worry about the number. So sine cosine will be one four. Right? So now you can see that negative had to go with the four, okay? and that's your x. And your hypotenuse will be square root of seventeen. Okay, this one is quadrant four. And again, you be careful with the negative. Deal deal with the negative later on. So it's got one over five. So sine is one, cosine is five, and the negative will go with the vertical. And Pythagorean Use Pythagorean theorem, this would be square root of 26. Yeah. Okay, so again, they're going to expand. So cosine x minus y will give you cosine x cosine y plus sine x sine y. Okay. For cosine function, this, this, this is the way opposite. Okay, so cosine x cosine would be negative 4 over square root of 17. Cosine y would be Five. Uh, this is y over square root of twenty six plus sine x would be one over square root of seventeen. Sine y would be negative one over square root of twenty six. So this will equal to this will give you negative twenty. This will give you minus one over uh, square root of. You can use your calculator to multiply out. So 17 times 26 equal 442. And then you simplify, so you're going to get negative 21 over square root of 442. And you want to check, see if you, maybe this is the square root of that, so check, see if that is divisible by, okay, so divide by 21 again. No, okay, so that's it. Let's go to number 33. Number 33, looking for the tangent of x plus y. And it gives you sine x equal to negative 1 over 4. Cosine y equal to negative 1 over 3. And then it tells you that cosine of x is less than 0 and sine y is less than zero, okay? So again, you need to locate your triangle, 
So sine is negative, so you got these two possibilities, right? And cosine is negative, so it's over here, so this is out. Okay, so you can use, use information to use a possible negative to figure out your, your, uh, your triangle. So now you can go and start to fill it in. So sine is 1 over 4, so it would be negative 1 over 4. Is your Pythagorean theorem. This would be square root of 15 negative, right? So 16 minus 1 gives you 15. Over here, you can do the same thing. Cosine is negative, so you're going to get this two, right? Cosine is negative, so you get this two. And sine is less than zero, so sine is negative. So that means this is the one. Right? So you can use information to locate the correct one. And so now you can use the cosine uh, number. So negative one over three, so this is negative one over three. So this will give you square root of eight or two square root of two negative. Okay. Use your particle and theorem. Okay. And this would be the y. Okay, so let's go and use the tangent uh, identity. So this is equal to tangent x plus tangent y over 1 minus. It's kind of easy to remember. If it's a plus, it's a plus, right? And it just kind of, think of it as a distributive property, just distribute, right? And this would be opposite, and, and there would be multiplication on the bottom. Okay, you can always write down your identity, then you substitute. So tangent x is sine over cosine, so negative 1 over negative square root of 15, plus tangent y is sine over cosine, again, it's going to be negative 2 square root of 2 over negative 1, over 1 minus the tangent x and tangent y. Okay. So now you have complex fraction. Again, the way to simplify complex fraction, well, first let's go and get rid of the negative. Negative always cancels out. Okay. And to simplify complex fraction, you multiply by common denominator. So multiply by square root of 15, square root of 15, square root of 15, square root of 15. So this cancels out, so you got 1. And this one does not cancel, so it would be plus uh, 2 square root of 30. If you have 120 square root of 120, that's fine. Square root of 15, and this cancel out, so minus 2 square root of 2. Okay? And over here, that's good enough, because I think the book just leave it like that. If you want to simplify more, you can, but that, that's sufficient.